Here's a related rates question. Uh, this is a situation where we have a marshmallow going into the microwave. They say the marshmallow is in the shape of a cylinder, and they give us the volume formula for a cylinder right here. Uh, we're going to have the marshmallow have an initial radius of one centimeter and an initial height of three centimeters. Uh, when the marshmallow is expanding within the microwave, uh, it's expanding at a rate of two cubic centimeters per second. Uh, we know that as it grows, the height is always three times the radius. We want to find the rate at which the radius is increasing when the radius is four centimeters. So I am always an advocate of drawing a diagram, even though my marshmallow isn't going to look very appealing here. Uh, there is my marshmallow. Uh, we know that this marshmallow has a height since it's a cylinder and it also has a radius. Now the one important thing to keep in mind about related rates questions is that anything that's changing over time you do not want to label with a fixed value. So one thing that's kind of tempting to do is to take this diagram and since it says a radius of one to put one here and then to take this height, height of three centimeters, put three here. But as the marshmallow expands in the microwave, the radius and the height of the cylinder, the radius and the height of the marshmallow are changing. So I'm just going to label this with an R. I'm going to label this with an H. Both of those quantities change over time. So diagram with things that are changing over time labeled as variables. Step one in a related rates question. Next step is to try and define your rates as derivatives. So if you look at the last sentence here, find the rate at which the radius is increasing. Well, the rate of change of the radius we can define to be dr dt. So what we want to know is we want to know dr dt, and we want to know it evaluated at the instant in time when the radius is 4 centimeters. So we want to know this evaluated at the instant in time when r equals 4 centimeters. This is the question. That's what we're looking to find. right? We don't know that, but we're going to eventually, uh, by the time this problem is done, have dr dt as our result. We have another rate that we're given. Uh, the marshmallow expands at a rate of two cubic centimeters per second. That's the rate of change of volume. So dv dt is going to be equal to uh, two cubic centimeters per second. One thing that might be a little troublesome at this point is that we don't have dh dt given, but we do have this statement right here, assume that as it grows the height is always three times the radius. Well what we can say is this, the height is always going to be 3r. Uh, that will allow us to take our volume formula, our equation relating our variables and eventually relating our rates once we take a derivative. Our volume equation, if we put this in place of h, we're going to have no more h in our equation and we don't have a need for dh dt. So, if we take our volume equation and we do what I just mentioned, put 3r in place of h, and then just simplify this a little bit, our volume formula uh, can be rewritten like this. 3, I'm going to just bring this constant out in front of the pi, so 3 pi, and then r times r is going to give you r cubed. So here's your volume formula. What you want to generate is you want to generate a dr dt, because that's what we're looking to find, and you also want to generate a dv dt because, well, we have access to that and we can utilize it. So if you take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to t, the volume of the marshmallow is changing over time. The volume of the marshmallow is changing as the marshmallow expands. So the derivative of volume with respect to time is going to be dv dt. One thing that's a mistake that I've seen get made off and on with related rates questions is we take the derivative of this variable, we just assume, all right, it's a variable, the derivative of it's going to be 1. Uh, no, we're not doing the derivative of this with respect to v. If it was the derivative of v with respect to v, it would be 1. But we're doing the derivative of it with respect to t, and since v changes, since volume changes over time, its derivative is going to be dv dt. Now, this 3 pi is a constant, and if I'm taking the derivative of the right side of this equation, I'm just going to multiply the constant by this exponent, so I'm going to get 9 pi. I'm going to subtract 1 from that exponent. The other thing that you have to watch out for within a related rates question is you have to make sure you are using implicit differentiation. So r 
changes over time. The radius of the marshmallow changes as the marshmallow expands. So r is a function of t. So what I have to do is, is use implicit differentiation, which is really a very special instance of the chain rule. And what I have here is the derivative of the outer function, inner function r left inside of that. And then I'm finishing my chain rule by multiplying by the derivative of my inner function, multiplying by the derivative of r with respect to t. And so now what we're ready to do, if you notice this last line, we have a number 2 that we can put in place of dv dt. We have a number 4 that we want to put in place of r, the instant in time we want to know dr dt at. Uh, and that's just going to leave us with an equation that will be able to be solved for dr dt. So if we do those things, put 2 there, put 4 in place of r. What you're going to end up with is, let's see, 16 times 9. 16 times 9, let's see, is that 16 less than 160, right? So I think that's going to be 144. So we end up with 2 equals 144. Uh, there is a pi there still, 144 pi times dr dt. So what is dr dt? Well, dr dt is going to be 2 divided by 144 pi. Uh, there's dr dt. It's a pretty tiny value. That'll definitely reduce as well. I'll just kind of throw that value over here. I can reduce that to 1 over 72 pi. Um, if you want to think about the units here, which is, is something that's good to do, I try not to do it in the middle of the problem just because it, it kind of clutters uh, my, my workspace a little bit. But at the end, I always like to try and confirm and, and see if my units are what they should have been. I would guess that if we go back and, and look at this problem, you would probably say that since, since dv dt, the rate of change of volume, is measured in cubic centimeters per second, and the radius is measured in centimeters, I, I'm guessing you would predict that our answer should have units of centimeters per second. So if we go back and look at this line right here, this is dv dt. This is measured in cubic centimeters per second. Uh, this is dimensionless, dimensionless. This 4 is measured in centimeters. We're squaring that. So this product of 9 pi and 4 squared is actually going to have units of centimeters squared. When we divide cubic centimeters per second by centimeters squared, we do end up with a result that is measured in centimeters per second. So everything works out the way that we thought that it should. Uh, and there's your rate of change of the radius at the instant in time when the radius of the marshmallow is 4 centimeters.